it's time to do a quarterly wrap up. So I read 16 books. Uh, it doesn't seem like a lot, and it probably isn't a lot, but I'm not the fastest reader, and I read, I don't read as much as well. So, uh, 16 books is not bad for me since my Goodreads goal is 70 books this year, and Goodreads told me that I am on track. So I'm very happy with my progress so far. So let's start out with what I read in the first quarter of 2023. So I started out my year with reading, actually, Murder Mysteries. So the first book that I read is The Guest List by Lucy Foley, which I gave three stars. It was just alright. I find that the characters were kind of annoying, and we... um, I find that the characters are kind of annoying, and though the mystery was quite compelling for most of it, ultimately the end of it was kind of... almost like, is this really it? But, I mean, I had an enjoyable time. I had a fun time reading it because, truly, it was compelling. I think Lucy fully created a mystery that makes it very exciting to keep following on. And it is about a couple that goes onto a private island to have their wedding and guests are all invited onto this island. And there's a locked room murder. da 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 you know. Finding the review of the... The killer was probably most the most lackluster part of the entire thing. But unraveling all the secrets and mysteries that each of these individual people have on the island was what gave me like a lot of excitement reading. So, three stars. Pretty good. Moving on to another murder mystery. Because that month, I watched Glass Onion and I was seriously, seriously, very much inspired. We are reading The Mother of Roger Ackerid by Agatha Christie. And I also gave this three stars. Um, I think reading this made me realise that I just prefer Agatha Christie's work in a movie or TV show form. I find that her writing is just not for me. I find that it's very straight to the point and there's no like... You're not really seeing the expressions of our characters. You're not seeing the, the intensity of their emotions which you would see on screen for the books that they made um, into movies, which is like The Murder of Orient Express, The Death on the Now. I, I enjoyed those movies to hell. So I realised that even though I may enjoy Agatha Christie's plots a lot, I don't enjoy her writing very much. But what's this book about? This book's about a locked room mystery again, of course. And it's about this random guy called Roger Ackerd, and he was just found in his room dead. And that's the mystery. We don't know how it was locked and who killed him. Da 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 da. Alright. Moving on. The next book I read is uh, in February already. Oh, okay. I didn't read much in January. That's kind of depressing. But it is by Richard Iodi. It's called. Iodi on top, and I gave this also three stars. Mm, fun experience, but what's this book about? So I watched uh, a Graham Northern interview with Richard Iodi, and this guy is mad funny. So he was talking about his book called Iodi on Top, and this book is actually about a uh, a movie starring Gwyneth Paltrow called um, View from the Top, and he literally this book is just about him ranting about this movie it's like a gigantic essay about him ranting about this movie and sort of relating it to some of his experiences in life but because i did not watch the movie i didn't feel the intense feelings that he felt about the movie so i guess even though he was funny there are certain misses with like um there are certain misses with the jokes that i did not understand because of that so even though it was kind of funny and entertaining there were a lot of parts that bored me a lot so giving it three stars seems appropriate and the next book that i read is everyone's favorite book the final empire by brandon sanderson oh it was stress reading this book because everybody loves the miss bond trilogy we know that the whole fantasy community there's not one person that i really know that dislikes it they might feel lukewarm feelings about it but I've never seen anyone dislike it. And for me, this gave me 
lukewarm experiences, but I was insanely entertained otherwise. So what is the final final empire about? It's about a rebellion. So we are following our main character Vin, who uh, who joins a ragtag group of rebels to try and defeat this r- in uh, this ruler who just doesn't seem to die. Like he is the ultimate ruler, the villain has won, and he is the one that's sitting on the throne for years on end, and he doesn't seem to be able to die. And so they're trying to take him down because he's kind of an asshole. And that's what the book's about. So, I enjoyed the book for what it was. But I'm obviously not the biggest fan of Brandon Sanders' writing. And I'm someone who cares about prose quite a bit. So, even though he has excellent world building and his plots are kind of action-packed, his writing always fails me to a certain extent. But I still had a wonderful time. I was still very invested and I still wanted to move on with the series. My favourite part of the book, which I have to mention once and for all, again and again, is that there's a romance in this story. And if anybody knows me, they know that I don't like romances in any of my fantasy books at all. Like, I prefer it to either be on the back end, like the very, 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 very back end. If not, it should just not exist at all. But for me to like this romance, truly shocking for me. I think it's just a subtle way of him playing it into the story and then it really like (sighs) pulling at my heartstrings and I I felt it and I was like, I'm rooting for the two of you because it's not the main point of the story. But then whenever they appeared together, I was so insanely invested. So yeah, that was my favorite part of the story actually. (laughs) Did I say how many stars I gave it? I gave it four stars. Okay, moving on. The next book that I read was Miracle Creek. Uh, by Angie Kim. Oh, 4.5, sorry. 4.5 stars. I want to say trigger warnings for sexual assault when it comes to this book. And I gave this 4.5 stars because truly, what an excellent book. So this story is about actually a courtroom case in Virginia. There is this therapy that they're having called submarine, like a submarine therapy, which is to just give... um a lot of oxygen, like hyper-oxygenate these patients in hope that they will cure certain like medical diseases that, you know, medicine have, has not come to be able to cure. Like, what is it, autism or like maybe fertility issues. They say that hyper-oxygenating a patient can help them get better. And we're dealing with oxygen. That's a highly flammable gas, no? So, the courtroom case is about the fact that this submarine thing, this submarine therapy, gets uh, blown up and two people die inside. And so we see the intense sex saga of different families that are involved in this case. Um, the patients that are involved, the main family that's running this business. And we see all their secrets and all the things that they hid from each other that caused the event to happen. The description of this book starts with How far will you go to protect your family? Will you keep their secrets? Ignore their lies. That is truly a good punchline for this book. And I thought that this was excellent for the conversations that it had about autism, about family, about love. You know, platonic ones actually, not so much about romantic ones. But it's all about those things that we care and love for people, but sometimes the decisions that we make may cause more harm to the general public than we hope that it would. And these conversations make me like really have a very difficult time enjoying this book. At the same time, I understood the importance. And therefore, in the end, when I finished it, it stayed on my mind for really long. And I decided that 4.5 stars is the only appropriate um, star to give to this book. But the only reason why I had an issue with it and why I docked 0.5 stars was probably the pacing issue. I had some problems with the pacing. Well, some parts feel a little bit more explosive. Some parts just dragged out for no apparent reasons. Like Even if it's about learning about a character and their backstory, it just sometimes felt a re- really a little bit unnecessary. Like If I didn't have that information, I don't think it would have destroyed my enjoyment about the book. Yeah. The next book that I read is... <laughs> My, my beloved Cinder Williams Chimer, Children of Ragnarok. And you guess what? I DNF this. <sighs> you know what? I'm so disappointed because 
I love the Seven Realms series by Cinder Williams Chima. I truly, I loved it. Um, I read it because of Regan from Peru's Project years ago when she recommended this in her childhood bedroom. But Children of Ragnarok sounds like a promising new series from Cinder Williams Chima. So what's it about? It's about literary Ragnarok. So we're talking about, you know, Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> Thor. <laughs> Loki, yes. So, ever since Ragnarok, the great war between the gods and the forces of chaos, the human realm of the Midlands has become a dangerous place bereft of magic where most uh, led lives of desperation. So, we follow a young boy who is actually like hoping to become a Viking. You know what? I don't actually know what this story is about. I just heard Vikings. I just heard like Norse gods and I wanted to read this. And then when I read it, there was an instant romance in the first 100 pages and I gave up because I can't take any instant romance at all. Like, the worst thing is that the characters literally had no reason to be attracted to each other, but they were. And then they were almost immediately, like, doing some romantic thing with each other. And I hated that so much and I had to move on. So, unfortunately, I can't tell you what this is about. Oh, gosh. Gotta look it up, but I don't recommend... (laughs) I don't recommend, I mean, unless you like instant romances, but I can't do it, so I can't recommend this to you, and I will not talk about this book anymore. Okay, moving on. The next book I read is Never Die by Rob J. Hayes. Thankful for the recommendation by my friend, Patrick from Patrick Leo. Yes, Uh, I gave this four stars. Very, very fun. You know, if you want to anime in a book, this is an anime in a book. Because, um... If you like watching Kung Fu, this book would do it for you. It's all Kung Fu, but he writes it in a way that you can actually imagine the moves. And I love it. That was so good. So the only reason why I probably docked a star is probably because um, though his writing was really, really good and the story was very fascinating and interesting and exciting, that um, his world building was maybe like just lacking, quite lacking for me. Because he picked a lot of like Asian mythology from like Japanese, especially Japanese mythology, which I can see from there. Um, and he just took out like the yokai thing from Japanese mythology and then planted it into the story. And then I think he essentially, yeah. And so <clears throat> he just used like myths and legends from Japanese culture. And I just thought that, you know, he could have, a little, he, he could have been a little bit more like unique with his world building. He didn't have to just use just Japanese mythology. Like I thought that he could have come up with his own monster system. Like he didn't really need to use the yokais as his main source of inspiration. So I think for that part I, I kinda docked the star for that reason. Like, I, I didn't really enjoy that very much. And additionally he had a very repetitive writing. A lot of his characters kept on like repeating their actions over and over again. I was just so annoyed by that. I don't like repetitive writing but by the end I understood why it had to be there. So, moving on to what this book is actually about. So, we follow a young boy called Ian. And Ian is on a mission to collect uh, heroes to help him uh, with his task, with his mission, which is to kill, to kill the immortal emperor. But he can't do it alone because he's just a little kid with, no, with not much abilities. But he collects his five heroes to help him get through his mission. And that's the story. Super fun. I totally encourage you to read it because it's very short. Very, very short. And you have a good time. You have a good time. Oh, the next book I read. The first one star of 2023 goes to... Verily by Colin Hoover. Okay. Am I surprised? Maybe just a little bit because people who didn't enjoy Colin Hoover's books... Say that Verity was by far the coolest, the most exciting thing they've ever read from her. And you know what? I was insanely disappointed by everyone and their opinions because I thought that this was not it. First of all, is this a thriller book or is this a romance with a little bit of thriller elements? Because everyone has pitched it to be like a thriller book. Like this is the first time Colleen is doing a thriller novel. And I think I was bamboozled. I think I was tricked. Because actually, truly, it's just a romance book with some thrilling elements. And you know what? Truly, Verity is just a Walmart version of Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Okay? 
Because that's the truth. That is the plot. I mean, everybody is talking about team letter or team manuscript. I'm like, well, what are we talking about here? I believe in none of that. Yeah, I'm no team of anything. This is a ridiculous, ridiculous story. I didn't like it. It's really not for me or whatever, okay? I guess it's just not for me. But honestly, it's like, to me, it's just a badly written book. Like, what are we doing here? Oh my god. So, to talk about, I mean, if you don't know what Verity is about, even though I think pretty much every one of you knows what Verity is about, it's about this girl who is ghostwriting for this author that is like, kind of super sick. Uh, she's sick. And so she enters this mansion of her families and is helping her write, helping Verity write a, a ghostwrite, a novel for her next book in her series. And then she in she oversteps her boundaries is all I can say. And this deserves every one star. I just, you know what, I'm just upset because I want my Audible credit back. The thing is expensive, you know, it's like $15. I need it back. I'm still crying for the audible credit that I lost. Truly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The next book I read is Unnatural Causes the Life and Many Deaths of Britain's Top Forensic Pathologists by Richard Shepard. Okay, why did I read this? I gave this three stars. Why did I read this? Okay, I've been wanting to read this for the longest time. And I, as you know, I'm a nurse. And I really, really enjoy... Uh, memoirs from medical professions like the one from Adam K you know that one is funny that one is really enjoyable for this I enjoyed it but I think it went over my head a lot maybe because he is a forensic pathologist and we're not really closely related but because he the whole book pitches itself as about talking about death and talking about you know loss in some senses I, I I really related to that because I'm a palliative nurse and I I wanted to see death in the lens of someone else and how they would portray death a lot. But it turns out that it just ended up being a lot about him um, talking about his cases, about him like, you know, discovering why someone died rather than really like honouring people and honouring that they have died. So it's really not about that. I, I just misunderstood what the book is about. But I understood um, the importance of this book. I mean, though we are not the same profession, we are similar in some senses. We both deal with death and, you know, dead people. Yeah, so I related to his... There was only one part that I really, really enjoyed was when Richard Shepard actually went through a severe burnt out from his job. Like, he, he realised that he was really, really burnt out and he went into a major depression where I feel like even though I didn't go into a depression, I struggled a lot um, last year with my job, which led to my sabbatical uh, last month. I really related to that point of taking a break from work when you need to. I I mean, I've been so privileged to be able to do so and Richard Shepard too was privileged enough to do that, to, to be able to take a sabbatical from work. But You know, which reminds me to everyone who is burnt out from work, that if you could consider taking a sabbatical of at least a month, that that really helped me a lot mentally. I encourage it if you can do it. It's really, truly super helpful in helping my mental health go back to the way that it was. Okay, but we move on. The next book I read, oh gosh... Wow, this topped Miracle Creek. Uh, it is Any Man by Amber Tamberlin. Holy sh- it's short. It's a short book, but you know what it's about? It's following a serial sexual assaulter woman. Is that the right way to say it? And we are following the perspective of the three to four men that she sexually assaulted. And how... They are ex- and how they are trying to cope with the trauma they experience, and how the media and the people and the society around them are responding to their trauma. So it brings up a lot of interesting conversation because obviously men can be assaulted too. So is their female counterparts, but men probably experience it less, or either way, it's talked about less. But you know, it brings up very important conversations of like the fact that. 
men can experience the same things that women do experience, although on a lesser incidence, but it's still just as traumatic. And just because they are men, that we shouldn't discount the fact that it's still a traumatic experience. And the way that society in this book portrays their response towards these men was kind of disgusting. Like they, I guess they were laughing about it a little bit, like talking about how them as men, who, how could they not fight off a woman? Like, were they not strong enough? Were they not, were they not doing enough? Or like they were asking for it? And I thought that this is strange. That I know women experience the exact same things where oftentimes I find a lot of cases where People always say, like, the woman kind of deserved it because she was asking for it. Like, w- w- nobody asks to be assaulted, okay? Yeah, so I think this book brings up a lot of important conversations. For me, you know, it is very frightening. And it's very difficult to read, truly. Because you're inside their heads. It's a first-person narrative. And you're inside this men's head. And you, you see them struggle through your trauma and you it's a very good portrayal the audiobook is the best way to go for this book because there are like podcasts there are like tv show interviews and you really really hear the elements of all those special effects things and the men all the different like narrators did an excellent job portraying these men and their trauma and you really feel and you're you're really 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 inside their head and i felt so much for this book that i had to give it five stars that i know that that though it's an uncomfortable read, that it's a read that everybody must have. And more people should be discussing about this book. It shouldn't just be at the back burner. We should be talking about, we should be actively talking about this more because it's an important conversation. So that's why I gave it five stars. Very excellent. The writing was excellent. It was an immersive storyline, good experience and good topics. And so, so respectfully done like all these conversations moving on to my next excellent read the rage of dragons by evan winter totally change of pace from the previous book but wow what one of the best fantasy i've read this year so far so far because i haven't read a lot i've been slowly pulling i'm slowly like getting through my um tbr but oh my god the burning. I'll have my the review that I did for the Rage of Dragons up here somewhere. But excellence. If you like the Count of Monte Cristo, or if you've ever been interested in the Count of Monte Cristo, or if you like revenge stories, or if you like, or if you like Ingoyo Mataya from the Princess Bride, you will like our main protagonist Tao. He's insufferable. Truly, he's insufferable. But the fact that he wants to take revenge on the man that killed his dad, which is the main plot, is what's so exciting about this. You're like, yes, Tao, take revenge. You, you just become evil and angry like him. And I'm just so fascinated by this world and its magic system, how unique. It's called Rage of Dragons is because the women in this book, they have the powers to like enrage men or like make them stronger. They have powers to like uh, stop their enemies and whatsoever. They're, they're the only ones that have magical powers, but it's like one in the millennial, one woman in the millennial would be able to call on dragons. Like the o- only the strongest of the strongest magic wielders would be able to call on a dragon. And learning about this magic system thoroughly, slowly, because Evan Winter wants you to learn it about learn about it slowly. You get really invested and you're like, wow, wow, wow. Like, this is so exciting. Like, this is by far one of the most unique magic systems following um, the final empire by um, Brandon Sanderson. Like, the two of them are really on par. Like, it's very, very, very unique. Very interesting. And the story itself is exciting because obviously our main character, Tao, is deep in revenge and anger and all these negative emotions. And you're like, I'm rooting for you. I want you to kill this man. You see him through his training arc, you see him fighting, you see him training with his SWAT brothers to become the strongest man alive so that he can, like, get revenge. And that excites me a lot. And when the book left, and when the book left off, I need to pick the second book up. But you know what? I can't. I'm stopping myself because 
there's only number two. There's no other books anymore in this series right now. Like, Ever Winter hasn't come up with the next one. So, I'm trying to hold myself back so that I will not suffer from Islam. Yes. Okay. Read this book. You have to read it. If you love fantasy, you must. And if you love revenge, you must. Okay? Mm. Take my advice. Thank you very much. Next book. A Desolation Caught Peace by Akardi Martin, which is the second book to the Texcalani Empire book, which is the second book and the sequel to The Memory Caught Empire. I uh, did not enjoy this as much as A Memory Caught Empire, and I gave this three stars. I, It's okay. I mean, uh, the politics are still strong as compared to the first book. In fact, we're getting even more political. But with, with, with the first, in comparison to the first book, I was less intrigued, in fact. Because maybe I think uh, Akardi Martin brought on um, things into the plot that I was not the f- biggest fan of. Like, I was not very interested. There was romance um, between ding, ding, ding. characters. There's a romance between characters that I cannot name. And I'm, I'm kind of bored of it. And um, the... It, it just kept jumping POVs, which makes the story very choppy. And I, I didn't really, like, follow any one character, and I was not invested in any one character, per se. And so, I didn't really enjoy this particular installment, though I still like it a lot. So, this is by far the last installment in the duology of some sort, because she's supposed to write more, but I, I there's no news of any one Tex Kalani book that's coming out anytime soon, so... That's that for Desolation Called Peace. But because it's a sequel to A Memory Called Empire, I shall describe what A Memory Called Empire is about. A Memory Called Empire is about our main character, Mahid Jismar, who is coming from her her station, which is like an individual country of some sort. And she's going to the Tex Kalani Empire as an ambassador for her station. And she's actually taking over her predecessor, a predecessor, Eskander, but it seems like Iskander might have died under unusual circumstances and so ensues a mystery about him. And then you realise that the politics and the empire is not as it seems. Da-da-da, and so book two continues on from that plotline. <gasps> the next book. The next book is The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruth Safon. Oh, and translated by, I have to mention this, Lucia Grace because she did an excellent job translating this piece of work i read this for my very first thanks to you uh, episode uh this is uh recommended by max from well done books so i'll link the video here somewhere and excellent excellent book 4.5 stars what a rich story full of intrigue you know it's about a boy who loves this book called the shadow of the wind by julian Carex. And he wants to find more books from Julian Carex, but he can't find any more of these books and ensues a mystery that he realises about Julian Carex. So, um, it is a historical fiction. I'm not the biggest fan of that by right, and, but um, okay. the mystery really intrigued me and the familial uh, friendships that are made in this book truly hit me in the heart. But... Other than the fact that the storyline and the writing and the prose is everything that I like, and um, the relationships and the characters are also the kind of things that I like. The main reasons why I didn't enjoy this much is because um, um, Carlos Ruzafon liked to throw in a lot of sexual. He liked to throw in a lot of like sexual things. Like I really don't understand why, and he kind of like degraded women a little bit, like. The women in the book were always objectified, which I did not appreciate. And additionally, the romance was really lacklustre for the two romances that really ex- that we really get to experience here. So those two things were kind of boring. But if you want a more in-depth like, thoughts about it, I did make a very in-depth like reading vlog and overall like review of the book at, um, in the video above. So please do check it out, okay? Because if you're interested in The Shadow of the Wind, my thoughts are more comprehensive there. Oh my gosh, we're finally reaching <laughs> the end. How High We Go in the Dark by Sakura Nagamatsu. Who is the next book. This is for actually the second Thanks to You video. And this book is actually recommended by Carrie from Carrie Can Read. And I gave this 
for stars. Again, if you want a more in-depth review, I did it in a reading blog that I'll put above here somewhere. But simply put, I enjoyed this book because it's a conversation on humanity. It's a conversation on humanity's ability to hope. Because this book is about epidemic that really rages across Earth. And we're not talking about COVID level. We're talking about way, way worse than COVID level. Like, it is actually really fatal to get this disease that is passing around really quickly. And you're passed around through, like, seafood and the, and the sea somehow. Seawater of some sort. And it's very devastating to see how humanity slowly dies out from this pandemic but you see that despite them dying out that despite all these things that are happening towards them that they still find a lot of hope in the future in the future of being able to escape this virus inability to escape and find a cure for this virus an ability to once again get back to where they were before the pandemic ever happened. And and seeing the ability to fight just hits home for me in a way that makes a lot of sense because I graduated as a nurse into the pandemic and then seeing seeing the COVID forces at its most forefront, you know, I felt acutely for all the people who are being portrayed in this book because it's like a series of short stories and we're just linking up their short stories into one singular novel about people trying to survive. And there's just something so beautiful about seeing humanity survive and try to survive despite everything that's against them. I think the exploration of humans is what intrigued me so much about the book and what made me so, so much and what made me enjoy it so much. Yeah. Oh, and finally, we reached the very last book that I read, which is for the quarterly wrap up Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey. So, if you watch my vlog, you know that I didn't enjoy Leviathan Wicks that much, but I gave it three stars. Um, Leviathan Wicks is about two people that encounter a girl on this ship, sort of, and they are trying to solve this mystery that is in that involves her and they realize there's a bigger conspiracy at hand in the solar system da, 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 simply put but um the vital wigs start out really explosively and then it just fizzles out for me because i think that a lot of people will enjoy the story either way but i realized that i didn't really enjoy it because it didn't really hit it didn't really like intrigue me enough i was kind of bored of the conspiracy i was bored of the politics and additionally our main characters, Holden and Miller, are both like people that I cannot root for. And they used a lot of scientific terms that just went over my head. Like, I literally do not understand G-Force. Until the end of the book, I still don't really understand G-Force and the impact of it on a human body. Okay, I, don't, I just don't understand. Okay, I'm trying... I must understand like every single component of my book in order to really enjoy it. I'm someone who cannot just like push through without understanding some level of it. Even if I'm confused, I must understand at least like 50%. But I look at G-Force multiple times in this book and I could not understand what it means. I'm just stupid, I know. Okay. But if you want like a full like review and proper review on this book, it's um, I'll put it up here above. But this is how I felt about Leviathan Wakes. <sighs> and we have come to the end of this video. I've read 16 books and that was so much to talk about. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that, you know, you guys are doing well with your reading this year and you guys are proud of how much you're reading this year. Do not look at the numbers. Just aim for books that you actually love to read, okay? So I'm proud of you, whoever you are, if you're reading, uh, if you're proud of your reading and you're happy with where your reading's at. But otherwise, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!